do you think that he just thinks that um, Edward and Alphonse are kind of like sons to him? Because I know he takes on a little bit of a paternal role, invites them into his life. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I, I adopt a lot of people, you know, and uh, get like my daughter's friends, I adopt them, and uh, my, even like my friend's kids tend to look to me, you know, as like the whole sonny all the time. So, yeah, I mean, you, you get to be a nurturing person. You kind of, when you see people who are in need, you want to help them. Yeah. Is there any, other than the obvious, underlying cause of at the end of every phone call with uh, Mustang telling him to get a what? What about it? Yes. Yeah. I don't know what the question was. <laughs> other, other than the obvious, was there any other reason that he continuously told? Yes, he Mustang. wanted him to get a wife. <laughs> and he likes. He, I think he liked the fact that it irritates the hell out of him. <laughs> so that's why he kept doing it. Yes. Did uh, May support Roy's dream of getting a wife? No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think maybe. Maybe. The one after he became here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. It wasn't. I didn't ever. I never examined that in the character either. So maybe I should have. Does he seem to support him coming here? Does he seem to support Roy? But I don't know. I think he probably did. Though. You know, I think he really was on Roy's side. Yeah. Was there any reason that the Brotherhood and the original Full Metal Alchemist that after that scene with the boys on the train, they actually left the uh, scene where he's waving on the Little Series and took it off the Brotherhood? <laughs> They took it off, Brotherhood? Yeah. 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 It's not there. there. It's not there. Oh, what a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you didn't know I don't. I don't know. I don't know why they did that. I didn't see that. Yeah. Never mind. Say never mind. Yeah, I'm gay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Who are your favorite characters? What's the story? Oh, my favorite. Uh, Lust. Lust. Because it's Laura Bailey. Well, I love working with Laura Bailey. Any chance I can. Uh, Laura Bailey and I have done a lot of shows together. And she was Kid Trunks on Dragon Ball Z. And she was also. Uh, have you seen Kodacha? You guys should see Kodacha. It is one of the best uh, shows that no one's ever seen. It is so funny. And Laura Bailey plays a little girl named Sana on that. And I play her imaginary teacher. Sana has a TV show. And on her TV show, it takes place in a school. And I play the teacher on the TV show that Sana plays on. And I play this buck tooth character named Shinjiro, who talks around his buck teeth. And it's a very, very funny show. Uh, and Shinjiro's always trying to bug for the camera and trying to get Sonic's attention because Sonic gets all the live yeah. But, uh, yeah, Laura, anytime I can work with Laura Bailey, it's awesome. Yeah. Actually, at my uh, manga that I did for Tokyo Pop, I based one of the characters off of her. Cool. Yeah. Yes? Uh, you did Apachai. Yes. Yeah. The original voice for that was really high pitched. Yeah. Like, was it, was it a direction you decided That was completely it was me. really low pitch? That, that, yeah, originally. It was like, like, like yeah. the whole thing, right? Mm. And I, when I, I was auditioning, I thought it'd be funnier. If he was like, really like this, you know, big husky guy, who, ah, bah, he like sticks into this thing. You know? <laughs> like, uh, it, when things confuse him, like, I don't understand! Ah, bah, you know? <laughs> just, and then when he fights, like, ah, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I thought that was funnier, so I, I went in that direction. And uh, no one else at the audition did, everyone else was trying to go like the original, so. Yeah. Um, during the uh, various, the various, the various views, Alicia is basically not understanding what's going on. Were you present for watching, uh, I guess it was a little girl that actually had to be in those lines? No, uh, you know, generally we're only there for our lines. And that's why we really depend on the directors to know what the hell's going on. Because if they, they don't, then we, we're lost, right? Except on that, on the one episode where he died, I did get to see the whole episode first before they recorded her. Um, mm. Because uh, Mike, who was directed that episode, he just knew how important that episode was. Generally, we don't get to see it beforehand, but he gave me a copy of the original Japanese along with the American script so that I could really understand this like a week beforehand. Yeah. What that you uh, watching that? I mean, did that have any like, effect on you? Was it kind of... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to put all that in there. You know, you know what the audience is expecting and what's going to happen. And so, yeah, you want to make that part of your reads. And you, you, know, you also want to make it much more tragic. 
because the more tragic it is when you do that, the better the payoff when she's sitting there looking at the grave and goes, Daddy has work to do. Why would he get up? That's you know, going to be uh, much more impact with the watch out. Yes. Okay. How would Maze Hughes propose <laughs> to his wife? How would he propose to his wife? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, honey, we've been together for a while, and uh, I gotta say, you're the best woman I know. And uh, I just wanted to know if, um, well, if you'll accept this screw. Oh, well. <laughs> I think we should get together and make some beautiful babies <laughs> with this screw. <laughs> Hardest emotion to, to really present yeah. it is uh, sadness. You know, to actually feel that. I mean, it's it's the hardest because you actually have to do it. You know, you have to actually reach into yourself and find things that really upset you. Mm. Point of answering this question. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's so fake. I mean, you really have to be in that moment. You know, and it can actually be very draining. You know? yeah. Anger is very easy because we all have things we want to just get out. You know, but. Uh, and sadness and devastation, you know, depression, those are very, very difficult things to do. Is there one certain thing that you draw upon to promote Yes. Yeah. That's all you're going to get. <laughs> 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 yes. Right. Yeah. There's my question. Do you think that the series ended too soon? It only had 108 chapters. I thought it was more longer. I don't care. I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it did end too soon. Hmm. Uh, any other questions? What is the, um, you feel is the funniest character you've ever done? Uh, is very funny. Krillin can be very funny. Uh, Hughes can be very funny. Uh, oh, oh, Grandpa Jin is funny, I think, too. Uh, Shin Chan. Uh, he's, yeah, he's hilarious. And he plays in a cover band of Bruce Springsteen stuff. So, <laughs> baby, we were born to run. <laughs> Which you'll see in a future episode. <laughs> uh, I, I tend to play the funny characters because, you know, for me, uh, my voice acting heroes as a kid was one guy. It was uh, Mel Blanc. And he did Bugs Bunny and Porky Pig and Daffy Duck and all those all the all those classic Warner Brothers characters, yeah. I totally love that. So when I became a voice actor, I wanted those parts. You know? mm -hmm. So I tend to get the really over-the-top stuff. Hughes is very tame for me, actually. <laughs> um, and then after I got Hughes, I got every character that looked like Hughes and, or, or was someone's dad with glasses. <laughs> Suddenly I was playing it all over the place. Even, even Seiji from Moonface is kind of like the Hughes of that series. Any other questions? 